Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for high-level traders to learn valuable trends and strategies, connect with other top traders, and become consistently profitable. Click the link in the description of this video to receive a special offer on our revolutionary PS60 training. Access to our daily interactive webinar filled with experienced traders and so much more. Space is limited, so make sure you don't miss out. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccentTrade.com uh, weekend wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing okay. I want to welcome uh, all our friends uh, that are joining us this morning via either uh, Twitter, uh, Twitter, uh, Stock Twits, and especially you guys uh, over at YouTube. This is our uh, weekly uh, wrap-up show uh, covering the, you know, not the events of the macro market, okay? We are covering the events that a trader goes through and that the trader continues to go through uh, week in, week out, year in, year out. And that's the ultimate goal uh, is longevity. And, you know, it's, it's really amazing that, you know, all of us, and again, I consider myself the chief idiot, okay? There is nobody that is a, more of an idiot than me. So my opinion, right, my opinion means absolutely nothing. We talk about this all the time. Price action is the key, right? Price action, the key. Uh, price action is always right. Our opinions mean nothing. They're less than nothing. And the faster you can really embrace that, okay, the really faster you can really embrace that and just accept that we are wrong no matter what we do, okay, and price action is the only key to longevity, then you can start like letting go of, of, of a lot of bad habits. And again, trading is all about sucking less, right? I even tweeted about this. Uh, I literally tweeted about this. I think it was yesterday. And I said in the tweet was, we all start out as shitty traders. Pardon my French, but that's the truth. We all start out as shitty traders, okay? Our goal every single year is to be less shitty than the year before. And that's all it is. It's all it is. We're all a work in progress. Nobody's a perfect trader. Nobody's a great trader. It's all about building off of uh, good, um, good scenarios, having really good discipline, having a great game plan, the process, the whole thing, a lot of discipline, obviously a lot of patience, and making sure you're solving for the next trading day. That's it. So we're all idiots. And the one thing I always talk about is the market is not very creative, okay? Market's not very creative. It kind of repeats itself over and over again. So why are we trying, why are we so arrogant enough to think that we could outsmart the market, right? All you need to do is go back to last week's video. That's it, just last week's video, how we talked about some of the myths of trade, right? Just how some of the myths of trade. Fridays are boring. Nothing is going on. Okay, you might as well take the day off. And all I kept on saying was on last night, you know, last weekend's video was, well, why would you take this, you know, why would you take this old wives tale and embrace it? You're losing out of four Fridays a month and 48 Fridays a year. That's 48 trading days. You're completely brushing to the side because you heard at some point that Fridays are going to be boring and dull and nothing going on. If you traded the last two Fridays, right, you had this massive, really aggressive move in beta last Friday that was really punctuated with a big Alibaba breakout that later failed, but a big Alibaba breakout. And Friday was one of the most aggressive uh, rallies we saw this year in beta. So that's two Fridays in a row that's supposed to be boring, that's supposed to be nothing going on. Uh, all you're doing, again, is letting the market take advantage of you. Again, we have to admit, guys, say it after me. I'm an idiot. My opinion doesn't matter. Other opinions that don't matter. We trade on value, not because the market's open. And the most important thing is, da, 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 stay in business for the next trading day. So if you look again, and this is, you, you could almost rewind the video to last week. You could, again, look at the market last week and look at the market this week from the point of indexes. Again, remember the whole thing that the stock market is dead, right? It's all irrelevant. The scoreboard is irrelevant. It's all about the individual stocks. So again, stock market over. It's all about the market of stocks. So if you look at the scoreboard for this week, it kind of resembled the scoreboard from last week. Last week, the NASDAQ was up about 1%. This week, it was up about 1% and change. S&P was up a little bit last week. The Dow was down a little bit last week. Same thing. It's exactly the same thing. Half of a percent up for the S&P, half of a percent down for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. But yet, the value in the market was super, right? The value in the market was super. Yeah, I think we had one slower day. I think it was like on a Wednesday. And again, remember, it was a short... Uh, short driven week because of the Memorial Day uh, three-day weekend. 
But the other days were very, very good, very, very aggressive. And the most important thing is, again, what every single trader uh, yearns for, and, you know, whether they know it or not, or it's like subconscious, we're looking for value. And that's what we got this week. You know, we got a lot, a lot of um, a lot of headlines over the last couple of weeks, and we talked about this again da, 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 last week's video. Gathering up data, data. Remember, guys, gathering up data, da gathering up clues of where the market potentially going. So again, we had the Trump North Korea news, right? Trump North Korea, no, you know, uh, we're canceling uh, canceling the little summit, and then we canceled it on. Okay, great, great, great. Market sold off and then rallied. Then you had the whole thing with Italy, which remember I talked about Italy. Yeah, as much as you know, I love Italy. I've been to Italy twice. I went to my honeymoon there in Italy. Uh, my wife's Italian. My kids are half Italian. Okay, I love it, Italy, right? It's awesome. But nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares on on the overall macro view. You know how nobody cares because the market was down and then the market bit right back up. So again, all these clues. Bad news was getting bid up. Bad news does not get bid up when it's actual bad news. So what does that tell us? News again is irrelevant. It's all about how the market perceives it, and it's all about how the market trades off of it. So you had several. Uh, really aggressive headlines, North Korea, then Italy. Remember, Deutsche Bank going to zero. Everything is going to zero, right? Nobody cares. We're about to be at all-time highs. And that's the bottom line. What we saw was even a bigger clue this week. We started seeing it on Tuesday, how big the disconnect was from the Dow Jones, quote-unquote, the market, that was obviously dominated by a lot of the banks that were getting sold off on the Italy news. Again, nobody wants uh, a repeat of 2007. As soon as you hear any type of macro-political news, oh, my God, sell the banks. Again, nobody cares. And the market, again, kept on going into speculation money, and speculation money was represented again in beta. So even if you don't trade beta, you have to respect the fact that as soon as the market gets any type of traction, any type of foundation starts brushing off bad news, they start rolling over into beta. And what happened on Friday? Da da da, option expiration, blah, blah, blah. All the perfect day for a run up in beta names. And that's exactly uh, what we had. And again, all you need to do. All you need to do is is go back, you know, go back into the week and really dig underneath the, you know, underneath the crevice to see how much value there was, how many big diamonds that were hidden in the dirt, and you will see with all this, you know, all these headlines and all these political unrest and economic unrest, we're literally a stones throw away. Look at the Nasdaq 100. We're literally a stones throw away from being at the 52-week high on the macro surface. We got above. Uh, the, the May 14th highs, and we closed above the Bollinger Band. Why is that important? It means we, this is the first close above supply. So we're going higher. Again, unless we're getting, unless you're going to get hit with another macro headline that could throw a wrench into kind of a short term rally, based on what we've seen, just from the technical side, based on what we've seen, we should have, again, another absorption of selling and then start moving higher. Because again, you go through the NASDAQ 100 list. It will really, really correlate exactly uh, to what I'm saying. So, if you look at that, if you look at Friday's session, pretty aggressive sh session. Okay, uh, all you need to do, and again, guys, get to for all you guys who are in the live webinar, get to morning strategy early. Everything we talk about, uh, especially the aggr aggressive pivots, we talk about this prior to the open. Again, everybody needs to know what these what these aggressive pivots are. And if you look at Friday's day, again, big, big rally uh, in the NASDAQ 100 names. Uh, Amazon broke out. Uh, Amazon broke out. Uh, Netflix broke out. Alibaba broke out. Google continues to be uh, very, very strong. Square, you see all those weeks and weeks of the you know, call buyers of the 55s and the 60s. That went higher. Apple's starting to get very aggressive. Boeing is setting up, probably needs a couple more days. Uh, you got Spotify, which again, it's most amazing. Spotify is actually turning into one of my favorite stocks to trade. Um, it really is. It, it's starting to, you know, it's starting to be a really, really good trader. Again, a lot of people don't put a lot of emphasis on it. And I noticed this because if you look at the volume, for example, on a Spotify, the, the, the bids and offers are very, very thin, right? They're very, very thin. You see re uh, retail being really represented. Uh, on Spotify, um, pretty much between the whole numbers. Once it gets to the whole number, you see the aggressive buyers coming in, lifting size, and the stock goes. So, uh, pretty good session on Friday uh, to end the week. O overall, uh, no complaints. Pretty solid week. Uh, again, you know everything we put, you know everything we put into uh, obviously the live webinar, uh, the live webinar, and our um, and our uh, private. Uh, Twitter PS60 feed, uh, which again, quick announcement, uh, we, we made it really, really affordable bundle. Uh, we actually bundled up uh, the PS60 workshop, okay, the PS60 workshop, 
um, the three hour PS60 workshop, uh, the PS60 private feed, which you're seeing here, uh, and the nightly uh, and the nightly video that goes out between Monday through Thursday, the whole option flow, the webinar recording, uh, all the uh, stocks that are on uh, on the trade will actually list for the next day. So it's a really, really good value for all you guys. So you might want to check that out. So you can see how the day played out here. Uh, Pre-mark, you can see the time. Uh, Pre-mark, and watch Lulu, uh, Lululemon. Uh, again, monster move. Stretch, right? Stretch, monster stretch. Um, Lululemon, uh, 1341 was the pre-market high. Very, very aggressive. We talked about this three minutes prior uh, to the market open. Uh, you can see what Lulu did all day. Just, just an absolute, just, just massive move. Just an absolute massive move. Again, here was your pre-market high right here. Here was your pre-market high. And it just, just absolutely exploded. Uh, went as high as almost a, the 124. Just an absolute beast of a move. Uh, then you had this, this rocket launcher. And again, guys, congratulations to what you guys who caught Alibaba again? Look at the time. And again, there's no editing, guys. These, you know, this isn't alerts. Okay, it, it's the most, when I hear the word alert, I want to choke myself. It, it, again, these are actionable areas of interest that momentum can be picked up on an algorithmic scale on this arbitrage that we found through supply and demand. That's all it is. There's no alerts. These are price actions. Whether you're in the stock or you're not in the stock, the stock is either going to go or it's not going to go. So you can see uh, Alibaba right here. Um, Guys, watch the 99.50, huge spot if it needs to build. Again, the reason why 99.50 was a big spot. Again, look at if you look at uh, if you look at the highs right here. Uh, actually, excuse me, I'm sorry, it's right over here. When you look at this whole area right here, you can see the Bollinger Band into supply. Once it broke this 99.50, again, just a rock star move. Again, huge, huge move. Again, congratulations to you guys who caught that. Uh, Amazon, which I traded all week. Excuse me. Let's start with uh, Spotify. Uh, nice, nice move. I made like a buck on it. Uh, Spotify, one ninety nine needs to build again. Nine twenty six. Uh, again, look at Spotify. Uh, you know, here's Spotify. Here's the high. Uh, again, the pre market high was uh, 18, 158.84 from th two days ago. Okay, it wasn't even the pre market high from uh, Friday. It was the pre market high from two days ago. And I said, hey guys, watch the build above 159. If it gets above 159, this thing can go. You can see the big move move here uh, almost went up to uh, 162. Uh, Amazon was trading all week. I was trying to time the, you know, the really big breakout all week. I'm a little bit disappointed. I'm kind of a little disappointed with Amazon uh, on Friday. Uh, I bought Amazon. I made like three bucks in it. And it kept on failing. It was so odd. If you traded Amazon yesterday uh, on Friday, especially from especially from uh, the equity side, you kind of know every single time it looked like it was about to explode, right? Every single time that it was about to explode, it went up like two bucks and then it came right back in, went up another like 50 cents and it came back in. It was a really, it, it, it really appeared that they were trying to take out, uh, it really appeared that they were trying to, you know, trying to clean up a seller there. And I'm trying to figure out why there was a seller uh, at the earnings highs, uh, but it, he was there. It was very, very obvious. He was there the whole time. But again, uh, I thought the stock only had to move to 1647. The reason, the reason I show you here, uh, you know, I took like three bucks on it. Just, it just wasn't behaving well. And you can see here uh, towards the close, it actually sold off. Uh, the reason why I thought the stock could get to 1647, again, this is the linear regression line. And look at the high of the day, 1646.72. But again, that was fine. Again, any trade that's profitable is a good trade. Uh, and again, we don't pick and choose on these things. Again, these are all on the feed. Uh, this is all on the on the PS60 feed. We don't pick and choose in these things for, you know, and, and show them on social media. This is what these pivots are. They're there. You know, they're there. And they're, they're a point of interest where supply and demand gets the uh, gets confirmed, and you know, usually good things happen once you have a good, good organic build. Uh, and then Tesla, right? The, the demise of Tesla. And again, like I say all the time, this is the absolute. Okay, this is the absolute uh, best trading vehicle. Again, pun intended. Uh, that I can remember over the last several years. For me, it doesn't make a difference. I trade on the long side. Uh, I trade it on the short side. As long as there's a range and stock can go from demand to demand, supply to supply. Uh, it's worth trading. And again, you can see this here uh, at 1021. Uh, I said, hey guys, uh, 289 build uh, could spike it. You know, 1029, uh, 289 build uh, could spike it. Here is the 60 minute view on Tesla. As you can see here, again, the high right here, right here. Okay, here. The high right here was at uh, 288.97, right? 288.97. I'll just call it 99. And I said, hey, listen, this, this thing can build. Uh, off this candle, you know, the stock can spike and you can see what it did. It st st stock actually spiked 
uh, all the way to 92. So big, big move there. Uh, there's a bunch of things here that I'm kind of leaving out. I didn't, I didn't take a, a lot of great notes. Oh, Square we had also, uh, I think I forgot to put this one in the PS60 feed, but I know we had this thing uh, in the live webinar. Square off that uh, 59 break, uh, Square off that 59 break. As you can see, ran to the $60 area, which they were peppering uh, for the last, uh, for the last, um, couple of weeks. So ultimately pretty good week. Uh, this, I actually traded some small caps, uh, pretty decently. Those I don't put, uh, the only things I put in the, the PS60 live Twitter feed are beta. That's all I, cause again, that's the most, uh, comfortable I am, uh, I am trading, uh, the highest level, uh, of interest for me in the most organic order flow. Uh, everything else we trade, uh, in the live webinar, including some small cap stocks, uh, some mid cap plays as well. But most important thing is I, I, I trade 90, 95% of beta. So that's what I put uh, in the live webinar. So uh, really good week, uh, pretty good week, uh, pretty, pretty good week. Look, going into this week, you, you have to like the market. Okay. You have to like the market. Uh, again, outside of, of a potential, any macro headline, okay. Uh, potential, any macro headline, you have to assume the market goes higher. Uh, look at anyway, look at everything. I mean, Amazon eventually will wake up and put up that their really big day. But again, look at Amazon's chart, uh, Facebook breaking out here. Look at Twitter. I really like Twitter for this week. You can see here that the high on Twitter here is this uh, thirty six eighty. Uh, looks like it wants to break out here. Um, Netflix, you know, Netflix is breaking out, right? Netflix is breaking out. Uh, listen, you know, you don't know wake up this week, right? You don't know wake up this week. It starts with a test and ends with a love. Again, if it confirms Friday's price action, you could get $10 worth of upside. Again, I know the problems, the burning cash, blah, 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 the safety issues. We all know this. We all know this. Again, remember how we started the video? I'm an idiot. Okay. I'm the king of the idiots. There's no bigger idiot than I am. I have no opinion. I have no bias. I trade price action. And the most important part is it's all about taking in data, waiting for your spotlight, uh, you highlight uh, your process to be highlighted. And the most important thing is to uh, make it to the next trading day. So uh, going into this week, I'm obviously very, very bullish. Uh, beta is holding up uh, very, very well. Uh, for all you guys who are uh, getting this video, you're obviously getting the email. You have the all, uh, all of the option flow uh, report, all the unusual option activity, the live webinar recording, which is an awesome tool for those of you guys who can't make it uh, every single day to the live webinar. It's all seven hours. Uh, of the day, you can see every single trade, uh, every single trade that, that I take, that we take. Uh, I show my, you know, my execution. There's no hiding. There's no editing. There's no after the fact Monday morning quarterback. It's trading. Again, we love in real time. We cry in real time. We laugh in real time. Don't we need to trade in real time? And that's the name of the game. Only way you're ever going to succeed, longevity guys, is watching order flow, embracing the process, and cutting out the bad habits. That's the name of the game. And it's all about longevity, right? It's all about having the ability to make it to the following week, to the following month, or actually sometimes it's even better just to say have a short-term goal of making it to the next uh, trading day. So guys, have a great Sunday. God bless everybody. And with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care, guys.